All right. Um, so let's floods, judgment, ends. That's what the heading says on our notes. And we start off with verses 1 through 20 of chapter 8, and it will break this up in little sections. Maybe to begin with, uh, how about the first five verses? Joan, you want to read uh, chapter 8, verses 1 to 5? But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heaven had been closed, and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. The water receded steadily from the earth. At the end of 150 days, the water had gone down, and on the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters continued to recede until the 10th month, and on the first day of the 10th month, the tops of the mountains became visible. All right, thank you. Yeah, God remembered Noah. <laughs> At first glance, we might think that, uh-oh, had God forgotten? <laughs> oh, yeah. Can't forget that guy. Well, it doesn't mean that, right? I mean, God, uh, God is all-knowing. One of his attributes. What's the, the term for that? God being all-knowing. We covered that recently in catechism class. Omniscient. Omniscient. Yeah. God knows everything. Yeah. Remember. Even the hairs on your head. All seven of them. Obviously. I was going to say, take a lot of memory. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, what does it mean that God remembered? Um, I, I like the notes there. It, it, this is not the first time that this appears in Scripture. You see your notes there? God remembered Rachel. She gave birth to a son. In Exodus chapter 2, right, with... You know, Moses, God remembered his covenant, right? So um, he keeps his promises. Okay, he keeps his promises. And, and then I think also, you know, also part of this, you know, um, God responds in love. And, and God <coughs> shows, you know, his, his care, right? And, you know, smiled upon Rachel and, and she conceived and, you know, God remembered his covenant and then and, and send Egypt, you know, a leader, Moses, to lead them out, right? So I think that's, you know, that, that's what we think of when God remembers and now he shows his concern. Now, now he acts with kindness and compassion and love and, you know, starts, starts what? Starts undoing the flood, you know, and the water beginning to recede and so forth. So... Um, that's what it, so again, not that God forgot, but God remembered in the sense that, okay, now he's going to act. Now he's going to show compassion and, and kindness and, and, and show his care for Noah and his family. And he sends a wind, it says. Can you imagine the strong wind that must have been? And the waters begin to recede, verse 2. Right, the springs of the deep, the water below, the floodgates of the heavens, which had been on, right, intensely, especially the 40 days, now that was closed up. Rain had stopped, water began to recede. End of the 150 days, so roughly how long was that? I mean, not, not quite half a year. Five months, water had gone down. Seventeenth <clears throat> day of the seventh month. Remember, remember uh, when Noah entered the ark? Is it the second month? Seventeenth day, right? So we'd say February seventeenth. So I guess five months, under fifty days, water had gone down. Water came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. And they continued to recede, right, till the 10th month, right? So, so three more months. <clears throat> on the first day 
of the tenth month. Oh, there's hope. There's hope, right? Uh, imagine how excited Noah probably got. Finally could see a little bit of land. <laughs> oh, mountains became visible. Um, the waters receded, your notes, number two. We can look at a parallel passage. Want to do that? Sure, we're in Bible class. Let's look at Psalm 104. We can maybe even add verse 6 through 9. So let's flip to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms is smack dab in the middle of your Bible. Psalm 104 is a lot like Psalm 33, a, a psalm about the created world. A psalm of praise to the Lord. So Psalm 104, I added, you know, verse 6. Um, well, you covered it with the deep, as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains, right? So there, there's, there's a reference to the flood. But at your rebuke, verse 7, the waters fled. The sound of your thunder, they took to flight. They flowed over the mountains. They went down into the valleys, to the place you assigned to them, for them. And you set a boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. We'll, we'll circle back to that at the end of this chapter, the, with the promise of a rainbow. <clears throat> so God reversing things, right? God God remembered, and now he, he shows his care, his kindness, his compassion. All right, back in chapter 8. <coughs> Uh, verse uh, 6, how about 6 to 14? I'm okay, breaking this up here. Wayne, we'll let you read it. 6 to 14. Then at the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window he had made in the ark. He sent out a raven, and it kept flying back and forth until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the waters had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove found no place to rest its foot, and it returned to him in the ark because there was water on the surface of the whole earth. Noah reached out his hand, took the dove, and brought it back to him in the ark. He waited another seven days. Then he sent the dove out of the ark again. The dove came back to him at evening, and there in its mouth was an olive leaf it had just plucked. So Noah knew that the waters had receded from the earth. He waited another seven days and sent the dove out again. This time, it did not return to him anymore. And so, in the 601st year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth. Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked up. He saw that the surface of the ground was dry. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. All right. Yeah, so do the math. You know, the, the, the length of, of the flood. You know, people sometimes, oh, 40 days. Well, we know it was much, much longer, but from, 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 from start, right? So Noah, 600 years old, that second month, 17th day, right, when it starts. And then, are you with me? 601. Second month, 27th day. So, for the Bible trivia question, how, how long was the flood? Well, 600. 375 days? Yeah, yeah. Plus 365. Plus 310 plus 375, plus. yeah. So, a year and 10 days, right? So, 
That's how long the flood was. Wow, that's all. Think about that. That's a long. Yeah, we talk about major case of cabin fever <laughs> and wanting to get out. But yeah, so, um, and so many people think it was merrily forty days and nights. That's just how long that intense rain came. But lasted so much more than that. But, but here's the, the coming out process. It, it took some time, uh, and, and Wayne read the verses uh, for us, and your, your question number three, um, you know, how, how did Noah, you know, gauge things and, and monitor what was all taking place? Who were his special agents? The birds, yeah, ravens. Um, are they in the crow family? I don't know, but you know, yes. big, big blackbirds, mm -hmm. scavengers, right? Sends out a raven. You know what? Flies back and forth till the water had dried up. Verse seven. I suppose a, you know, being a scavenger, if there were any dead animals or dead fish floating, mm -hmm. it could have, you know, you know, eaten them. But first, the raven goes out. Then what's next? Yeah, the dove sent out how many times are you keeping track? Three. Yeah, three of them. Verse 8, the sun set out. Dove could uh, find no place to set its feet. There's water all over. So it comes back. Must have liked Noah, right? Reached out his hand, right? Landed. In verse 10, he, he waits about a, waits, waits a week. And sends out that, that dove again. Came back at night, and oh, lo and behold, there is hope. It's got a, a, a fresh leaf and its beak. You know, which means that that you know there, there's growth taking place. Uh, and he waits seven more days. And a marvel at Noah's patience, right? But he's just he's waiting. Um, sends out the dove and did not come back, right? So he could assume right, things have dried up. And so it says there in 13, as, as again what Wayne, Wayne had read, by the first day of the first month of the 601st year, of Noah's life, right? The water had dried up. Noah removes the covering, sees everything is dry. And those are one year and ten days. The flood is over. What a, a year it was. Wow. All right, now 15 to 20. 15 to 20. <clears throat> Anyone want to read that for us? Bob, oh, you got it. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground, so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number upon it. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. All the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on the earth, came out of the ark, one kind after another. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. <clears throat> all right, thank you. Can you can you imagine what, what, what that must have looked like? Did anyone ever see... Um, like in the spring of the year when, when like calves or heifers are let out of a barn. I don't ever witnessed that before. It's really an amazing thing. No one ever saw that? Anyone ever see that? Yeah, I've seen sheep. How would you describe it? Oh, they just go nuts. <laughs> they go nuts. Yeah, I remember, you know, old Stanley Fenske when he was alive yet and had a few uh, uh, beefers, he called them, you know, steers that he was raising. And after, you know, being in the barn all winter long and, you know, when it's like mid-May and the pastures have grown up a little bit, I mean, they just go crazy, you know, leaping and jumping and 
so excited. And can you imagine the animals? And <laughs> what a sight that must have been. You know, after a year and 10 days, like in the ultimate case of cabin fever, John, yeah. What amazes me is how the animals, Noah's family didn't have to coax that donkey that would be stubborn and want to go the other way or try to round up animals. They all came two by two to him. And the same thing I, fit, I pictured going back out again. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, the Lord brought them to, to Noah. Uh, that was a miracle. And, and now they're exiting. And what a sight it must have been. So bring them out. Uh, you know, my 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 judgment is over, and uh, you know he he, he uh, you know bring them out. Why? It, it, end of verse seventeen, so they can multiply and and be fruitful. You know, all all animal life had been wiped away, and now we're gonna repopulate. And there might be a question I think about yeah in your notes. Um, you know, we got this command uh, given to Noah, which of course had also been given um, when that one, and creation to the animals. And it, it says, is there any comfort? Any comfort in this command for the animals? Bring them out so they can fill up the earth. I thought of a, you know, maybe a, 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 a supplement past, you know, Psalm 145, 15 and 16. Let me look up that one and then maybe answer this question in light of uh, Psalm 145, 15 and 16. Just used uh, these verses with catechism class. Uh, we're going through the first article of the Creed. Not only God's uh, work of creation, but also his work of preservation. Again, we're wrestling with, is there comfort here when, when God says to the animals again, like he did when it all began? Increase, multiply. All right, who's got Psalm 145, 15, 16? I got it. Got it, Carol? The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Yeah, so what does God promise to do with all this creation? Satisfy the desires. Yeah, to provide, to, to take care of them, right? To, to, to meet their needs. Um, and so maybe, you know, in light of that, how would you... You know, do we see the comfort here, right? You know, yeah, that they could get on with life. Yeah, get on with life, and I'll take care of you. And, of course, that would also be his promise to us, his children, right? Get on with your life, and I'm going to take care of you. Maybe not always give you what you want, but I'll, I'll give you what you need. After all, I did not spare my own son. But I gave him up for you all. Along with him, I'll graciously give you all things. So I, I, I believe there is comfort here that, um, you know, God uh, has his fingers in the pie, right? And, and you know, this, this earth is not like a, a, a new toy, you know, kids get a new toy and you know, and after a while, you know, the novelty wears off and, and, and they turn their attention uh, to something else. Uh, in the world that God created, though corrupt with sin, God, God still cares for it, loves it. Eyes of all look to you, and you provide. Okay, down, down below, uh, apply. And now we're getting at, uh, as Noah came out of the ark, and I wonder if he leapt for joy. He is 601 years old. <laughs> that was young. He built an altar. Yeah, he built an altar. 
first thing he did, and he took, you know, those clean animals that that, that God, you know, would accept um, uh, for worship, and he, he sacrificed them as burnt offerings, which, you know, meant that everything was was consumed, uh, the, the meat, the bones, the hide. And God smelled the pleasing aroma, again, describing God in human terms. Not that God has a nostril, but um, can please, the, please smell the pleasing aroma. So like when you, if, uh, you know, Grandma was making fresh bread in the oven, and you smell that, oh, this is good stuff. The sacrifice flowing out of Noah's heart of faith. So that's the first thing that Noah did. He built this, this altar. Now there are lessons in this for us. Okay, so now we want to apply that. Joan, what do you think? Big lesson. Yeah. Big lesson, you say. All right, let's hear it. Thank God for the blessings that he gave him in that and keeping them safe and all these animals safe just like we ought to be thankful like how the Lord spread out the crops of the garden from the asparagus the first thing and all the way down to the melons the last thing right all the all the stuff he gave us being thankful all right so yeah we're applying this in our lives and um um, you know, daily giving thanks. We, we need not wait till, what, the fourth Thursday in November, right, <laughs> for, for Thanksgiving Day, but um, every day, right, go oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Praise the Lord, O oh, my soul, all oh, my inmost being, praise his holy name. Um, what about uh, Romans, Romans 12, is it verse 1? Can we have you flip way over there? Kind of bouncing you around a bit today, but there to the Romans. Can we look at verse one uh, in light of uh, Genesis here and and, and Noah uh, building this altar and then sacrificing to the Lord? Romans twelve. Verse 1. My Bible has the heading, a living sacrifice. Well, if that ain't an oxymoron, I don't know what is. <laughs> right? You know, the, the burnt uh, sacrifices were, were killed. Right? A living sacrifice. So what does this mean? Who, who can read Romans 12? Verse 1. Susan, please. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your appropriate worship. All right. Thank you. Boy, Noah couldn't help but see God's mercy. Right? Of all the people, he and his loved ones only were, were spared. And in that, that ark, right, stayed afloat. For over a year, uh, it, it didn't become the Titanic, uh, but it, it, it floated, and God led them out. And so what did he do? He built an altar. And it says here, we are encouraged. Paul says, I urge you. He didn't say, you should, you must. I urge you. In view of God's mercy, view of his, his grace, his love, to do what? What are we to do? Offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Yeah, offer yourself. There's that oxymoron. A living sacrifice. Right, so a sacrifice is to God. Right, um, especially those burnt offerings, everything was to God, right? And, and so we offer God everything. Um, and, and our Savior, as we sang uh, 
It's, it's, it's quickly become, I think, my favorite hymn, His Robes for Mine. How does the refrain go again? My life is not my own. I'm like telling a joke and forgetting the punchline. My praise, my all. Yeah, my praise, my all. Belongs, I think. My praise, my all. Yeah. So everything for him. Um, uh, you know, speaking of, of, of him, um, how does that one go? Uh, uh, take my life. Isn't that gold? Yeah. I take my life. Let it be. The word consecrate, what does that mean? Set apart. Set apart. Right? I mean, you you own me. Right? You, you purchased me. Uh, uh, you know, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. And, and yeah, take take my moments and my days. Yeah, let them flow in ceaseless. Yeah, yeah, ceaseless. What's ceaseless? Uh, never uh, uh, yeah, never ending, you know. And, and so it's, you know, we, we, we often think of, of, of worship being what, right? One hour on Sunday morning, right? And, and yet, really, worship isn't. Really, worship is what? Worship is life. Yep. Right. Ever look at it that way? That, that our lives are an unending worship service to the Lord. Why? In, in view of your mercy. Right? And, and then every day we, we offer ourselves to God. Right? This oxymoron, this living sacrifice. Um, do we do that well? No. 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 Right? It is, it's a daily struggle, right? Um, but this is our, our, our desire, right? Our goal, compelled by the love of, of Christ. John, want to add? Well, it's just interesting that uh, he just had two of each species of animal, and now they, they killed a few for the sacrifice. I know that God can provide all things, but it's kind of interesting that that he had seven. Oh, yeah, great seven. one. But, yeah, but let's remember. Yeah, that, that would have been a problem, right? If uh oh, there goes the last couple of cows. Right. You no, know? <laughs> oh, but yeah, someone mentioned uh, God did have Noah take seven. Where is that? Um, oh, okay. Yeah, let's just yeah. Well, this is good. Let's can we find that reference? Um. Must be somewhere in chapter seven. Um, seven verse three. Uh, what is that? Verse three of chapter seven. Okay, thank you. Yeah, seven of, of every kind of. Yeah. yeah. So two of unclean, and then then seven of the, the clean ones. And that kind of got on, you know, their hooves, and if they eat cut or not. But, yeah, so God was looking ahead and uh, had given the ordinance to bring extra ones that could be then sacrificed at the end. I wonder. Well, you wonder, like, I suppose some of the animals would have maybe given birth even during. Yeah, that could be too, sure, right? They said they took all young animals. Oh, maybe that is, yeah, Didn't for the sake of sight. about food to, to use as, to eat their eggs or We missed whatever. one week and we missed that. Too. <laughs> 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 we got to be here all the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, Joan, you want to add something? Well, I don't know if all of you were at that every, every person uh, thing Outreach. that's coming up that... Um, Everyone Outreach? Outreach. Everyone Outreach. I don't know if you all were there or not. If you were not, it is well worth going to. And then when we pray that let the Lord use me, don't be surprised if an opportunity starts coming up to you right the next day. <laughs> because it does. Thank you for putting a plug in. Yeah, we got about, I think, 25 people about signed up, so. And that, that Romans verse is we, perfect for that. Okay. Today's a deadline. Yep. 
Yep, we might extend it a bit. We're going to make a last appeal, but uh, we're over. You know, I'd it. go again if I if I wasn't yeah. didn't have other plans that same day. But um, yeah. it's well worth it. The 29th and 30th, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It, 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 it's the fastest eight hour seminar you'll ever be in. It's the way they structure it. There's movement and activity. and um, It's well worth it. it yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. we. We're excited to offer it again, and we're the only church in the Synod. This is part of our yearly curriculum, wow. and uh, the Synod on Evan Commission on Evangelism. But what, what a great idea! So our outreach board, you know, I mean, we love it if you know 400 people came, but that's not. But every year we're going to peck away at it and just offering, and um, you know, the whole intent is that. Well, in fact, I might do a video message and talk about you, Sally. Can I do that? Why? <laughs> because, uh, uh, you know, one of our newest members is Carol, uh, and she wasn't. She's you know, got a new mission too. Well, you know, Carol uh, not long ago was searching in life, and she was struggling. And Sally was in Carol's life uh, as neighbors, and, and you know, she was there for for Carol, encouraged her, and you know, her 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 advice to. Carol was just, just come to church, right? So Susan wanted Carol to hear God's words and promises, and and, and so they came, and, and I followed up, uh, and you know I wanted to get Carol into the Bible information class, so I'm discussing that with Carol, and Susan is there, and she basically said, Carol, I, you should go, and I'll come with you, and you know that's what happened. Uh, you know, to make a long story short, and, uh, you know, Carol still has struggles and problems, don't we all? <laughs> don't we all? And, and yet, you know, she's in God's house every week, hearing God's word and receiving the Lord's Supper, um, you know, and, you know, all of us have a personal mission field. How many people in our lives are like Carol? They're searching. They're struggling. And all and I, I, I do believe that Susan has had a eternal impact on Carol. Yeah. Sally. Uh, uh, Sally. Oh, Sally. Sally. That's the Susan Sally, there you go. All right. Lois. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay. No. <laughs> Sally has had a lasting impact on the general. And that's that's the intent of everyone outreach. You know, and I, I just think that, you know, here at St. Peter, and it kind of gets at this at this seminar that you know we have we have so many things that members can invite others to. Right? And that, that's not as hard as sharing your faith, right? But just inviting anyone can do that. But you know, the Advent by Candlelight coming up. Our ladies have big plans. They want to rent the Rothschild Pavilion. And I think our leaders are going to try to make that happen with a request, Bob, be made to PGC. Um, heads up on that, Bob. <laughs> um, uh, but, I already heard the sirens going on. Uh, yeah, but, you know, uh, but that's a great thing for ladies to invite. You know, or I, I think of like the Bible information class that we offer a couple of times a year. <laughs> You know, and if all of our members can say, oh, here's a chance to, you know, invite someone, or, or like the baptism seminars. Um, you know, we had, I think, five people at the last one. We had a key to life family with three little children. They want help with baptism. Um, and another lady came as well, um, who, uh, what was her name? Was it Izzy Shep years ago? I remember that name. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, this lady knew her granddaughter. So, so, yeah, so those mechanisms, again, they are in place. Um, yeah. Even offering to go to the big class with your friend. Yeah, that's so huge, isn't it? That's, that's what, what, what Sally did with Carol. And what, why is that important to do? They don't feel alone. Yeah, it takes away that... that you know, just knocks that down and uh, we have a class going on Monday night um, and there are uh, 
about four people coming. Two of them are non-members. I gotta tell you this funny story. My wife got a yuck out of it. One guy's name is Scott. He's 64 years old, right? Works at a Spirus hospital, and we're talking the other night, and I, I you know, I, I mentioned well, I'm 55, and he said, oh, he said, I always thought you were older than me. <laughs> <laughs> I went home and told my wife, and she just, you know, laughed, you know, yeah. like. <laughs> you know, you know, that tail on your hair now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but, but then the other lady there, um, um, uh, you know, she they've got kids in our school, I'm gapping on her name right now, but she came the first week. Um, second week, uh, Tammy Smith, a uh, member of our church, mm -hmm. came with her. And the difference that made, I mean, that, uh, I'm forgetting her first name, but she just was asking questions. And uh, and then this past week, Stacy Summers was there because Tammy couldn't make it. Stacy's also a member of our church. And she came um, because she knew what would be maybe helpful for this lady. And again, because, you know, we are... Uh, the, the third lesson is on um, the Holy Spirit and being brought to faith. And this gal uh, uh, has a non-denominational background, so she's used to accepting Christ, you know, and, and having free will and making a decision. And here we get it, we're getting into how by you know by nature we're dead in sin, we're blind, we're enemies of God, and that was all very foreign with her, and she she struggled. To accept it, and you know that's okay. You know, just teach the word and plant the seed and and let it grow. But but asking the right questions, um, and it's so great that yeah that those other sisters in Christ are there to encourage and support her. So and and I think the everyone outreach again it just it helps train more and more people like you know. When you see in the bulletin, Bible information class starting in a month, all right, you know, who do I have to, in my life, you know, talk to about this and then steer them? That's probably the, the best thing that, as a Wells, we do, right, that, that our pastors, you know, I think we teach Beck very well. And, and you know, members are always welcome to come for a review, but it's probably the best thing that, that we do, right? A thorough, you know, some church bodies, what? You want to become a member, and you come to like a 90-minute seminar. And it's really not at all about doctrine, right? But, I mean, we you know, have a, a, just a thorough, um, you know, doctrinal course. Susan. I had the pleasure of getting a phone call from Bob Greening on Sunday night. <clears throat> he was just checking in with me. And um, he told me how elated he was on Sunday morning because a gentleman came up to him and said, Are you Bob? <clears throat> and he says, Yes, I'm Bob Greening. Turns out that this gentleman and his wife bought his condo two years ago. And this gentleman had seen Bob out in the garage and had talked to him before he purchased the house. He remembered how kind and how nice he was. Anyway, to make a long story short, apparently their two sons are in our school. And Bob said, well, do you remember them? And he says, no, and I, I, I don't know how to be a member. What I have to do? And Bob says, don't worry about it. I will have somebody come. So are you aware of this person? <laughs> they get kids in the school? Yeah, that's what he said, two boys, and he guessed yeah. that their ages were maybe 10 and 8. Okay. We have a, a lot of new families, so yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, he came up and he brings his daughter and he okay. talked to him. Bob was really happy. Yeah. I'll look into that. So. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of the two 
Boy, there are two brothers that are here. Yeah, that one, they did join, um, Dave and, what's, what's his wife's name, um, the gold, um, gold something. Goldsmith. Goldsmith? Goldman. Yeah. They joined a year ago. That was, yeah, last year. There's so. another two brothers over here. Okay. We'll look into it, yeah. Blessing of a growing school. You know, it's really neat to see. By the way, I was the baptism seminar that you've done this, four sessions, right? All together? We offer them three times a year. Yeah. yeah. Is that up on the uh, YouTube website? I don't think, yeah. Okay. Should be, maybe. Okay. Yeah. I, I really like the archive stuff because I go back to oh, things, okay. sermons, and all kinds of stuff all the time. Okay. And it's really helpful. Maybe next time we do it, we can yeah. YouTube it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, having the stuff archived is really nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, good stuff. Well, let's keep going. Next page. Um, uh, <clears throat> a few minutes here yet. Reverse. I think we left off with verse 21. We'll end chapter 8 and then uh, maybe in the chapter 9, just the first three verses for starters. 8.21 to 9.3. You want to be our final reader for the morning? So you can or, Sure, man. Go ahead. The Lord smelled the pleasant aroma. The Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the soil anymore because of man. For the thoughts he forms in his heart are evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike every living thing as I have done. While the earth remains, <coughs> seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Every animal on the earth and every bird in the sky will fear you and dread you. Everything that swarms on the ground and all the fish in the sea are handed over to you. Every living, moving thing will be food for you. I have given everything to you, just as I gave you the green plants. Stopping there. Yeah, that's far enough. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so a lot in uh, these, these handful of verses. By the way, verse 21, uh, especially the last part of verse 21, would, would be... Uh, one of the, the proof passages for what uh, what important uh, biblical doctrine, biblical concept. We'll never see the earth flooded again. Uh, all right. I was. The earth is going to continue. Okay. Yeah. I was a little bit before that. I was thinking, even though every inclination of his heart is evil. Original sin. Okay, original sin or, you know, uh, hereditary sin, uh, the, you know, the, the mortal depravity um, of, of mankind. Again, if, if, if this would be a topic on the view, they would, uh, <laughs> you know, they would uh, argue against this, but you know, this, is, this is human nature. Um, You've heard me say before, we don't have to teach our children and grandchildren how to be naughty, right? You know, they, 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 don't, they don't know how to do that. And, and right, all of us can look in the mirror and, and we, we know our sins and, and our thoughts. <laughs> you know, we know what, what we are very capable of doing. Um, yeah, so this would be a proof passage for for, for that, that truth. But there are some blessings in these verses, and that's what number one is getting at. What? What? It says three blessings. Can you find any blessings in here? He will curse the land. Okay, he will not curse the land. Um, or a groan. Yeah. I'm going to reread those words. Um, Never again will I curse the ground be because of man. 
Um, so it's kind of like, you know, God, God is is undoing it. Uh, if you would, was it with um, with the fall in the sin, chapter 3, what was the verse? Um, yeah, verse 17, if you just kind of flip back to chapter 3. One of the consequences of the sin, you know, God said to Adam, now the ground is cursed because of you. Right? So here's a blessing. God is, is taking that back. Right? I'm, I'm taking away that, that curse upon the earth. Um, you know, and, and you think about farming. You know, it, it's, it's not easy work, right? It, it's hard work, but... I mean, just you're driving out in the country, what do you see, right? The earth is yielding up a harvest. Look at it, right? What a blessing, right? And in my little old garden, yeah, there are weeds, but yeah, look what else grows. Wow, what a blessing. Even though my two thumbs are not green at all. What about the uh, lifting of the vegetarian mandate? Yeah, I'd say that's a blessing as a lover hey. of double bacon cheeseburgers. Yeah, I'm, I'm all in on that. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, everything that, that, that yeah. lives and moves, I give you as food. So up to now, I mean, vegetarians. Yeah, you know, but uh, vegan no more. You know, um, but now, now, now you can eat. You know, meat. Up till now, you know, the plants, but, but now, a blessing. Yeah. Originally, he probably had of eating plants because giving the animals a chance to multiply and things. Yeah, okay. Get the deer herd up. <laughs> of course, what, what else did he... Yeah, what also happened in these verses? Verse 2, right, which maybe wasn't the case so much before. And this too was a blessing. Yes. Yeah, that's right, because the lion would lay down with the lamb and all of that stuff. And now there's uh, the fear. Yeah. yeah, so animals, the fear and the dread of you will fall upon all the beasts of the air and all the birds of the air, right? So animals, you know, if, you, you know, if you're... You're walking and there's a deer nearby. It takes off running, right? You know, there's just a natural, you know, fear that they have. And that's why I like to say hunting is not grocery shopping. <laughs> you know, there are no guarantees, right? Um, so, yeah, you're going to... Yeah. And the last, the last blessing is that he promises to never destroy everything. Okay. Yeah, that's the biggie, right? Um yeah, end of verse, uh, chapter 8. Never again I destroy all living creatures. You know, so there'll never be a, a worldwide flood. And, and then verse 22, if this is our God's promise, on, until times end, right? Seed time, harvest, right? Spring, fall, cold, that's going to come. Uh, Wayne, look. Well, I was just going to comment on that. That what we hear on the networks throughout a pound into our brain is global warming, global warming, warming. warming. Yeah. And here we have that this. winter is not going to cease. We're going to have winter. Oh, by the way, if we don't get those temperatures, then we have these hockey stick wood well, probably could have gone up there and we invented. Uh, but cold and heat, summer and winter will not cease. Until times, yeah, well said, until the end. Yeah, Bob? I don't know if this is a blessing, and I'm not even sure how I want to deal with this, but I find some comfort that that God acknowledged Noah's sacrifices and responded in a positive way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like it didn't fall on deaf ears, if you will. But okay, sure. Yeah, so more, more grace from God um, to accept the offering and, and respond with blessings and, and the promise absolutely right Bob that is encouraging um, you know number two we're kind of talking about that you know God even protecting mankind that's a way of looking at it from animals hostility um, in that that natural instinct that God gave uh, to animals maybe in a sense to protect them from man but you could flip that around too you know um, 
I'm kind of glad when I go out hunting that bears uh, are afraid of us. You know, I don't want them coming after me, right? And I guess they say if you like get between them and their cubs, you might be in for for trouble. Um, but yeah, you know, way of looking at it too. And then number four, uh, what what covenant? Did God make? Um, I think that gets into the verses that didn't, follow. Didn't you skip three? I was going to say, wait a minute. You oh, okay. Three. All right. Yeah. This, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's big. Why does the Lord institute capital punishment? Okay, we have to read the verses first. Um, how about verses uh, four? Let's just do four through seven at this point. Um, four to seven. Someone read that, please. All right. Go ahead. But you must not sure eat meat that has its lifeblood still in it. And for your lifeblood, I will surely demand an accounting. I will demand an accounting from every animal. And from each man, too, I will demand an accounting for the life of his fellow man. Whoever sheds the blood of a man, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made man. And then verse 7, too. As for you, be fruitful and increase in number, multiply on the earth and increase upon it. Yeah, we, we sometimes use verse 6 as, um, you know, one of the proof passages for capital punishment. We would also, I think, Romans chapter 13, I forget which verse, talks about the government bearing the sword. Uh, you know, and in, in Bible times, the sword was an instrument of death, so... You know, God is the author of life, and, and God ends life, but he does give, um, you know, the government uh, the right to take the lives of people who are dangerous because the government exists to maintain order so people can live uh, peacefully. So it's an interesting question. Uh, why now? And I think as we think about this, oh, it, it, it does make sense. Why would the Lord, you know, right now institute capital punishment? We, and remember, context is everything. What did God just say it's okay to do? Shed blood. Well, he said it's okay to, to shed the blood of animals, right? Uh, you, 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 you know, you want a hamburger? Go ahead. Take the cow out. You want pork chops? You, you can kill the pig. You know, and, you know, less, you know, uh, the, 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 the sinful nature think, all right, you know, uh, all killing is okay. Except you know, for man. Yeah, here, whoa, 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 right? So, um, oh, now that makes sense why God pumps the bullets in a big way. When I'm giving the green light to kill for food doesn't mean, you know, you can kill your neighbor. Right? You shall not murder. In fact, it's the fifth commandment, so... Yeah, what do you got, Wayne? Well, in watching the, to prove this, that the Lord is correct when he said, man's heart is evil continually from youth, I watch these Alaska shows where the natives, the Eskimos, what have you, and even the settlers who live in the middle of nowhere, when they kill a moose or a deer or something like that, they thank the animal for giving its life rather than the God who gave them the animal to kill. You know what I'm saying? They're thanking the creature yeah. instead of the creator who made it. Yeah. And uh, it offends me every single time. Yeah. I always thank said that God was for it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Something darkness yet, yeah. Girl, yeah. I always thought that was the writers. They, I wonder how much of that is true. They do it. Oh, the writers put that in because it. it's their way of looking at spirituality without actually acknowledging a God. They do it. Well, so it goes back. It truly is part of yeah. their culture. Yeah. There would also I, when be I plenty, see that in yeah. different programs, I go, oh, that's the writers. They're, yeah. they're, they're like, spiritual. But not and John, as a hunter, you would say too, right? As a Christian hunter, you know, when, when we take the life of an animal, we don't find joy. In doing that, it, it's you know, but yes, it's part. Do. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, can really say that. I, I can honestly uh, say that, that it, 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 it's a part of the hunt, you know. And I think you can probably build a case that hunters love animals more than anyone. You have to manage the herd, yeah. you know. You don't want them starving to death in winter and so forth. So some need to be 
you know, but it's it's a part I'm willing to do. I don't I don't delight taking the life of a beautiful animal. You know, but it's part of the hunt, and right, John, there is a prayer of thanks to the Creator, you know, for the beautiful animals you've created, and, you know, John's granddaughter got a nice book, uh, what, Saturday, and he said that by the next morning the meat was all in the freezer, and, you know, it, you know, it, thank you, Lord, for providing. And, and a hunter's goal is to end the animal's life as humanely as possible, right? If you shoot one in an arrow, you get in the vitals, it'll it goes quickly. Thankfully. That's what you're about in those tracks. Boom. What? Yeah. So so no suffering. Um, <laughs> finally, what about uh, you know the, the, you know you know God tells Adam, uh, Noah and his you know sons and daughters, be fruitful, increase in number. Maybe the last one we have time for right now, number five. Um and this comes from the People's Bible Commentary, uh, the begetting, you know, kind of the conceiving and, and, and giving birth, rearing of children for God, is not only a high privilege, but also a solemn responsibility of people who enter marriage. It, it really is a purpose of marriage, right? And, and we know that sometimes, you know, for reasons maybe unknown, God might withhold children from, from some married couples, but um, it, it is something that God desires, right? Um, and said it to Noah and his sons and, and daughters-in-law. Um, and, and, and you think about the grace of God accepting Noah's sacrifice, Bob, responding favorably. What about God's grace given, you know, to, to parents that, that we can... Be part of God's ongoing work of creation. You ever think about that? Right? God still creates more people uh, through the love of a husband and a wife in marriage. And what a neat thing uh, to be part of that, right? Well, what grace. And as we're blessed with children and grandchildren as Christians, what, what most important thing can we do with them? Ensure eternity in heaven. Yeah, ensure eternity. We pass on the faith. You know, we will not, you know, uh, hold from our children the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, but but we're going to share it. And, and what a blessing to be part of this congregation where, you know, we got a child care center going and a Christian day school. So, I mean, we can pass on the faith. Um, how important. And what a privilege. So kids are a blessing. Even when they have crooked teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to get braces, right? Oh. Tell you, it's more fun being a grandparent. I'm really, you know, oh. <laughs> taking this. I, I don't care if my grandkids have crooked teeth anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not on the hook for that one. So, you know, why should I care? Uh, all right, it's a little bit after 10. Well. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.